Welcome to the Ludlam Model 26 training video. Survey meters such as the Model 26 are used for contamination surveys of individuals, vehicles, and other objects. In this video, we will demonstrate the basic functions of the meter and how to properly survey individuals and vehicles. The first step before using the meter is to verify that it has been calibrated within the last year. If today's date is past the calibration due date, then the meter may not be sufficient for use. Next, locate the battery compartment on the back of the meter handle. The screw at the bottom of the handle holds the battery compartment in place. Turn it counterclockwise and then gently lift to open the compartment. Insert two AA batteries with the positive end oriented upwards. The meter should automatically turn on once the batteries are inserted. Carefully replace the battery compartment and rotate the screw back into place. If the meter does not turn on, press the power button on the left to turn it on. If you'd like to turn the meter off, hold the power button for 3 seconds until it turns off. The 3 second countdown will appear on the screen as it powers down. Check sources can be used to check the meter's response to radiation. Using your provided check source, first take note of the source ID number. Remove the probe cover, then place the source where it's facing down in the center of the meter. Flip the meter over, holding the source in place. A list of acceptable check source readings will be provided to your county. Find your check source ID on the list and compare it to your meter reading. If the number is within the acceptable range, then the meter can be used for surveys. If not, consult your equipment provider to find a suitable replacement. Before using the meter, a one minute background count needs to be taken in the area the meter will be used. To do this, tap the mode button two times. You should see a one minute timer appear. Press the power button once to begin the countdown. Record the number and then click the mode button once to clear the screen and return to the main screen. After taking a background count, it will be necessary to adjust the value at which the meter will start to alarm. The first step is to take a background reading in the area you will be working. In the example shown here, the worker finds a background reading of 37 counts per minute and writes it down to remember it for the next step. The alarm threshold should be set to 300 counts plus the background reading just taken. First, turn the meter off. Turn on the meter and a firmware number will briefly flash on the screen. As soon as this number disappears from view, click on the mode button three times. The CPM at the bottom of the screen should start to blink if you did this correctly. This process requires good timing, so if you make a mistake, just turn off the meter and try it again. The screen will begin to cycle through the meter's different settings. The setting you will need to adjust is on the alarm threshold screen, which appears after the letter F flashes on the screen. The mode button increases the selected number, and the power button changes which number is selected. Change the number to the new alarm threshold determined earlier, and let the meter cycle through the rest of its settings. It will automatically return to the main screen. Surveying an individual for possible contamination requires the proper technique for accurate results. When conducting a survey, there are a few important things to keep in mind. Keep the meter no more than 3 inches away from the individual during the survey. The meter can be moved at a speed of up to 6 inches per second. When beginning the survey, move the meter back and forth over the face and torso with a path width of 2 inches between each pass. Move the meter up and down along the arms and legs, as well as their feet.
Have the individual turn around and repeat the survey. If at any point during the survey the meter begins clicking faster, slow down and find the point where the meter clicks the fastest. Move the meter one inch away from the individual and compare the reading on your meter to the decontamination threshold determined earlier. If the reading is above the decontamination threshold, the person should be considered contaminated. If the reading is below the decontamination threshold, the person doesn't require decontamination and the survey will continue. Surveying a vehicle for potential contamination follows many of the same principles as surveying an individual. Keep the meter about 3 inches away from any surface and try not to move any faster than 6 inches per second. When surveying the vehicle, be sure to check the bumpers, the wheel wells, the door handles, and other areas of interest which may include the hood, the roof, the mirrors, and the trunk. Inside a vehicle, contamination could potentially be anywhere, but some of the key areas to check are the steering wheel, the pedals, the driver and passenger seats, the interior door handles, the air vents, and the floorboards. If at any point during the survey the meter begins clicking faster, slow down and find the point where the meter clicks the fastest. Move the meter one inch away from the vehicle surface and compare the reading on your meter to the decontamination threshold determined earlier. If the reading is above the decontamination threshold, the vehicle should be considered contaminated. If the reading is below the decontamination threshold, the vehicle doesn't require decontamination and the survey will continue.